queer watch up witches what's up wise carriage witches wise carries witches um took some screenshots more of our subtitles lol tragic so <clears throat> welcome y'all can hear everyone Hopefully y'all can hear us good. Um, we thought we would just go ahead and hop on the bandwagon here. Hey, Nethery. And, you know, talk about the movie that everybody's seen, which some people have not um, accurately seen, if you know what I mean. They haven't seen it with their special eyes. They've just seen it with their... Mundane. Movie-watching eyes. Um, My brand. And that's Bird Box. So y'all know we've seen all the memes. We've seen all the, you know, reviews. We've seen everybody talk about it. You know, it's been out for, uh, what, three weeks now? Four weeks? Something like that. So, if you guys have not watched it and you don't want spoilers, go ahead and... Say goodbye, sayonara sugar, sayonara. Because we're going to get into it. We're going to talk all about it. And we if have you been warned, spoilers are imminent in this. And if y'all want to know um, what you're getting ready to get into so that you can pick up on the symbolism when you watch it. This maybe that effect is going on. Somewhere. Maybe that would even be better. Let me scoot closer. So, <clears throat> what I've noticed is a lot of people didn't really pick up on what that movie was about. Which is all the more reason why we want to have a spiritual decoding class. Because this movie is talking a lot about that kind of stuff. Um, it's uh, basically preparing you. Because if you guys, you know, we've talked about how many... Um, apocalyptic movies we've seen come out recently. Yeah. Um, so think about that. I mean, you know, we were imminent with an apocalypse just, you know, We were at the cusp ago. of a very, very, very large change. I do not like the way this eye is looking. And so, yeah, so have to watch us on the rerun, girl. So if you, um, were waiting for that, you know, it's a good thing that that was stopped because, um, I don't think a lot of us would have survived, um, because we're just not ready. Does this eye look weird to you? No. Mine eye looks a little bit weird too when I'm back here, but when I get up close, I can see it. But, <clears throat> anyways, y'all, um... This movie is just riddled with... It's just symbol after symbol after symbol after symbol. And it's symbol not symbol like symbol. you have to be a towering intellect to see it. But most people, and uh, I will even, you know, say that some of our own uh, subscribers have been posting about it on their Facebooks. They didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, girls, I'm going to have to tell you now. Because if you understand what they're talking about... It's a pretty good movie. If it if you're watching it like it's just a horror movie. Is this where the horror movie folk be? Then it's just kinda okay. But if you know that they're talking about um, you know, surviving a spiritual apocalypse, then you might enjoy it more. So post apocalyptic. How many of you guys has seen it already? Who's in the comments? Let us know. Ugh. We want to know who's seen it. And as we go through the movie, and there's, I'll tell you right now, it's impossible for us to tell you every symbol that's in that movie. I've only seen it once. Um, yes. Jill has seen it. Hey, <coughs> Ashley. Um, so if y'all are, you know, if you haven't seen it, I really think that everybody should see it. Everyone needs to see. Because. Take your blindfolds off. Take your blindfolds off. 
because um, it does deal with suicide, but it's it's different. Um, I don't know that you would necessarily call it suicide because I don't think people have control over it. Right. It's more like they're being reaped almost. Um, and they're doing things that are suicidal by and the I, token. I think, um, which I guess we'll get into that here in a second, but um, it's a nod to a lot of the things that's happening right now, you know, culturally for us, um, you know, that are, and of course they're going to amplify it to make yeah. it into a movie. I mean, so, it wouldn't be... I don't want y'all to think that we think that, you know, sometimes This is going to happen, and it's going to happen this way. And that y'all are going to have to run to this around magnitude. in some blindfolds to keep from killing yourself because you're going to see Cthulhu in the sky. I don't think that's how it's going to work. Cthulhu in the sky with diamonds in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Probably do. So, let's just go ahead and start at the beginning of the movie. Okay? So, in the beginning of the movie, we see... Um, Mallory. Mallory. A.K.A. Sandra, because that's probably what we're going to call her. We're probably just going to be calling her Sandra, okay? Um, but if you... Like, in the beginning, it starts out, they kind of jump into the future. But for the purpose, I guess, of our decodation, we'll go in chronological order. Because mm -hmm. this movie is kind of like flashbacks. Yeah, it jumps forward and back a lot. To show you where... It's kind of like manifesting. It's looking into the mm -hmm. future to see the past. Yep. Or, you know what I mean. Like yeah. Merlin. So, first time we see Sandra, honey, she's painting. Mm -hmm. She's an artist, and she's painting, and she's painted all these pictures of these people who are in darkness. Mm -hmm. Like, um, they seem to be having... Crises. A crisis. You know, they're kind of like... And I think a lot of people... I mean, who don't it, know spiritual symbolism thought that this movie was about depression, but it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with depression. Um, they may want you, like the general public, to think it's about depression, but the ones of us who know... What, we're using the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. For some reason I always want to say pituitary, but that's not the right gland. So, the ones of us who know are going to see it. Just like in the movie. So, <clears throat> we see Sanders painting. She's painting all these sad pictures. She's even painting the last uh, recreation of the Last Supper with all these disjointed, disconnected people. And um, she's in the center. You know, she looks just as depressed as everybody else. So she's like Jesus in the picture. Oh, uh, you know what? I bet if we went back and looked at those people, those would be images of people that she was with. I tried to look at it the second time I watched it. I don't think that they are, but who knows. So, <clears throat> but like, you know, she's, and she's pregnant, okay? And, you know, then you meet her sister who comes in, who's Sarah Paulson, mm -hmm. okay? Sarah Paulson comes in and she's very earthy, okay? She's dressed in brown. Didn't, do I remember red? She is just in brown and I think yellow. I think she was in brown and yellow. So. She's talking. She's talking about a particular type of animal. A horse. Okay. So do we know what the spiritual representation of a horse is? Okay. Horses represent um, passion and movement and they represent the spirit in general. I associate them with femininity. Mm -hmm. Wild female spirit. Untamed. Okay. Untamed female spirit. Um, if you think about it, um, because she's so in touch with those creatures, um, you're kind of thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, she's so earthy. You know, and stuff like that. She has to be spiritually inclined. So she's probably going to be okay. We'll see. 
So, and then she mentions, oh, well, you know, if you're not doing anything, she's saying this to Sandra Bullock, maybe you'd like uh, to see, uh, come see a, um, a big black stud with me. Okay, so a big black horse. Does anybody know what a big black horse represents? So in the Bible, they say that, you know, death is going to ride in on a black horse. He's going to bring with him death and destruction. And then Sandra goes over because her sister's telling her, well, have you seen the news? Have you seen what's going on? No, I haven't. And she goes and turns it on. And one of the news stories is of um, they're just showing a road where, you know, all these people are losing their shit. Mm -hmm. And who rides up in front of the camera, the camera, like right in the forefront is a man dressed in black on a black horse. Death. So they're saying death is coming. Um, and, you know, they just kind of laugh it off, you know, and it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but if you look, they show these maps, okay? And they say, oh, it started in Russia. And it's coming over. And did you see on the map where they said it was coming to? Or they expected it to come to next? Anchorage, Alaska. Do you remember what happened in Alaska this year? In Anchorage? I don't know if y'all have been noticing, but they were showing Anchorage on a map in movies, TV, commercials, all 2018. Just, just to let you know... That those earthquakes, those things that happened, are pre-planned. They knew it was coming. So they're showing you on that map. Look, hey, Anchorage. They don't mention Anchorage. The news person doesn't. They just show you a map and it says... Duh, 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 duh. And it's going... Duh, duh, duh. Yep, Anchorage. Boom. Like it's going to... You know, it's boom. heading right down the coast. You're like, oh. But then, Sandra... It's in Russia. I'm not worried. I'm not bothered, not phased, even though, you know, they literally just showed this map. So we're like, okay, is it in the United States or not? So um, she kind of, you'll see Sandra dressed in blue, okay? So she's depicted in the very beginning of the movie in a very blaring blue coat, okay? And we all know that alchemically blue. and spiritually, blue means Man. masculine energy. Masculine. And she was very um, out of touch with her pregnancy. She didn't think that she was going to be able to be a, a mom. She didn't really care. She didn't care. She was disconnected from it. She was didn't just care kind of like... Potential she, gender of it. She called it a condition. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is my condition. You know. It was a temporary thing. Yeah. It was just a temporary thing. Disconnected for me. completely from emotion. Right. Which we know that if you are polarized completely masculine, that's the way you would be. Okay? So, um, you know, we see, okay, well now, um, then they pass this girl in the hallway on their way in, and she's like in a red tracksuit, blood red. Velour. And she's got long blonde hair and red lipstick on. And she's what I would assume is talking to a love interest on her cell phone. She's like, oh my goodness. Da -da -da. Showing all kinds of... You speak from experience. Lovey-dovey emotions, honey. She's just so mm -hmm. in love. And she is so emotional. And she gets so emotional, baby. And so they pass her. They're going into the doctor's appointment, you know. And, um, you know, there's not a whole lot going on in the, um, in the doctor's office that is telling you a whole lot other than Sandra's not connected to her... Femininity. Her, yeah, her mother energy. She, her instinct. She's not... She doesn't care. She's connected to logic, mm -hmm. not instinct. Yeah. She's thinking rational and logical and like... Okay, this is a condition. I just need to get it out. She's removed from the situation. You know? So, then, you know, the well, the doctor, they, you know, they have this discussion. And then she's like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll adopt. You know, maybe put her up for adoption or him up for adoption. And, um, 
Well, right after she takes the pamphlet for adoption, they show her in the bathroom throwing up. And the brochure is on the floor. It's just like, okay, well, that it's almost saying like uh, the idea of that is out of the question. But she doesn't realize that that's not for her. Because even though right afterwards, you know, obviously the, the brochure didn't make her throw up, but it's symbolic. Mm -hmm. She's rejecting that. She's purging it. She's purging that idea, but she still takes that brochure with her. And so she sends her sister on out to the car while she's puking and you know there goes Sarah Paulson in her brown leather you know looking all earthy leather Tuscadero and you know um, when Sandra comes out that girl in the red starts going starts going nuts she starts banging her head against the double pane glass bong 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 lots of blood lots of blood so it's almost like the first person in the hospital who is susceptible to this is polar feminine because she's highly emotional mm -hmm. you know emotions cause her distress you know um, and so maybe this got to her first because she was so open mm -hmm. emotionally to see whatever you know whatever got affected to her right so then they get out to the car you know Sandra's running you know, and then they start seeing chaos, you know, people mm -hmm. trying to kill themselves, you know, cars crashing, all this good stuff, right? And Sandra's all about action. Mm -hmm. Sandra's like, you just got to go. You just have to drive. And uh, Sarah Paulson's like, I'm not running a red light. You know, she's like trying to act like, I'm not going to hurt another person. We have to do this the right way. You're mm -hmm. coming out to me with nature. You need to be on a horse. You need to be out in nature with me off the grid. That's where we're going. Okay, so think about that. So she's so if we are thinking about that archetype, that's almost like a um, a hippy dippy kind of witch, you know, or mm -hmm. a spiritualist who's into that like super. That kind of also reminds me of Mars Attacks with the hippy dippy woman, mm -hmm. like super nature sided, mm -hmm. and you know, you think, oh, I've got it all figured out. I can live off the grid. I don't need any of this. This is, you know, it's just me and nature. That's all I need. Well, so Sandra turns down to pick up um, something out of the back seat. I can't remember what it is. Her cell phone was going oh, on. Oh, yeah. And so oh, I remember that. she looks away. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, so she looks away. And when she looks away, Sarah Paulson... Gets, glazes over. Glazes over. She gets this green reptilian eyes. You know, or kind of golden looking. Mm -hmm. She's seen whatever it is. The truth. Uh -huh. And so... Um, is her tea her truth? It is, honey. So, <laughs> when she sees it, you know, Sandra doesn't see it. She's like, what, what, what? What is wrong with you? Just drive, just, just drive. drive. And so, then all of a sudden, she starts trying to wreck the car. You know, she's reckless. She was affected instantly. So basically they're telling you what type of archetypes are going to get affected instantly. Hey Lady Ambrosia, hey Jasmine. Um, what archetypes are going to get affected first? The polar, you know, emotional people mm -hmm. and the people who are, we think might be spiritual, but live under a guise of the, you know, completely nature-sided, you know. So we're, we're seeing, okay, those two archetypes, out. They're going to be erased. Um, they're almost saying, like, you know, male archetype, where it is completely masculine-sided energy, where they are so logical that they refuse to see, mm -hmm. um... You know, see things that can't be unseen. It's right. the 2D or they, conscious. They can see it, but they're not really looking at well, it. Well, that's really nothing. I've just seen that shadow out of the corner of my right. eye. That's nothing. So it's it's not like saying, oh, women are going to die, men are going to live. It's saying, it's saying people who are out of control of their emotions. Yes. So if you look and then think, okay, 
well. Um, so, what's her face? Uh, Sarah Paulson flips the car. She gets out of the car. She walks in front of a bus. Boom, she's dead. And then Mallory's left to fend for herself. And she's kind of like, I don't know. I've got I've yeah. to save myself. I've got to save myself. So she's looking. People are pushing her around. You know, it's chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And a woman comes out to save her. Because, you know, um, she gets knocked down the mm -hmm. sort of trope that pregnant women get pushed into. Uh -huh. Which is, you know... Helpless, can't defend herself. Victim. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's not that concerned about saving herself because she's not concerned about her baby, really. Mm -hmm. And truly. Because she's not in touch with her feminine energy, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you see this mom, this older lady... Um, who instantly spots Sandra and she's like, she's pregnant, I have to save her. She was wearing blue as well. And she runs straight out into, you know, the chaos to try to save her. And, you know, when she does, she's like, oh, oh my gosh, mommy, Mom, I've been don't waiting go. for you, take me with you, you know, and so then she's dead. Okay. So then when they get together, like, um, this, Me, Jasmine. <laughs> this guy comes and like helps Sandra up, you know, he snatches her up and he's like, come on, let's go. And she's like, okay, you know, and they just kind of like fumble into mm -hmm. these people's house. And it's, um, you know, the house that the, the lady came out of that had saved her. So they're all snatched up in this house together. This big motley crew of people, right? Yeah. Um, so, we'll give you some detail now about what's supposed to be going on. Okay? So, supposedly what has happened is, um, the veil has been torn away. There's no, nothing that keeps you the know, unseen from being seen. Right. That dark energy that is out there in our universe, the good, the bad, all that, is completely seen. Okay? And because people are so out of touch with spirituality, symbolism, mm -hmm. mythology, with... Um, They're stuck in society's creation, right, perhaps. In 2D Earth. They go insane and they don't survive. Because they can see it. And supposedly what they tell you is, um, is that what they see when they see this thing is they see their worst fears. Or their biggest loss or their biggest... Some emotional trauma that right. manifested yeah. and basically they it traumatized them. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, they keep saying, you'll see your worst nightmare. 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 Again, here we go with horses. Dark, dream-like horse, or dark dream-like horse, horse, female horse, okay? So, let's connect this to some mythology, shall we? So, you all know Rhiannon is the woman who tamed the nightmare, okay? And what is a nightmare? It is your own worst fear mm -hmm. in your subconscious that manifests in a dream to help you fight your fears, mm -hmm. okay? And if you can't fight your fears... You'll succumb to them. You'll succumb to them. But if you overcome the nightmare, if you overcome a nightmare, what happens? You, if you don't ever have it again, you well, can face it. Even more literally, you wake up. Mm-hmm. Wake up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Wake up. Open that third eye. That's what they're talking <laughs> this about. This is a third eye. <laughs> eye it sure does. Mine does. False one. Um, so that's what they're talking about. They're like, if you are going to overcome your personal nightmare, you, you have, have to, to wake, wake up. up. Okay? So, here we go, you know. So here's that horse theme again. Here's that theme of, you know, they're tying this into a lot of mythology. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you think about, um... Uh, Rhiannon's mythology, of course, she is connected to nightmares, um, and she is connected to death. She is a death mm -hmm. goddess. 
Um, and she's the goddess of spiritual type things. Like, as in like the spirit... Astral. Yeah, astral. The spirit realm, if you will. So, we see more about, her, you know, allusions to, you know, that archetype even later in the story. Um, so, eventually they all realize... That they're going to need some blindfolds. If they're, they can't look out. They can't see the sky. Can't look up. And if you do, you see your worst nightmare and you will instantly want to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Oh, and then there's the sky. Okay, here's another archetype that you have to look out for. I mean, they, they done read a lot of us to the ground, honey. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember his name. Is the one that worked at the supermarket. Is it Charlie? I think so. And he was writing a novel about an apocalypse like this that dealt with all of these deities of death and stuff like that. And so he's describing it to, you know, the people. He's like, oh, I know. I've got it. I've I caught know all the about it. The mythology is there. It's all there. They're this, they're that. And they are evil and they're demons and they're, you know, da, 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 da. So what archetype is that? That's somebody who takes mythology literally. Mm -hmm. So if you think, oh, I'm going to survive, honey, because I know all about Rihanna. And I know all about Bob. I know all about Cthulhu, honey. I know all about the Hecate. Santissima Muerte, honey. You know, they're all, you know, death. I am not afraid because I know mm -hmm. their mythology. But, you know, they're, they're coming to kill us because we have been reaped. You're this taking, is our fault. We've destroyed the earth and now we have to pay the consequences. Right. You, you took it all so literally that you missed the point, which was you just have to learn to wake up from the nightmare. Okay? So, that's, that's the kind of point that they're pushing with him. You can't take your religious teaching seriously. Seriously as in... You believe that word for word that mm -hmm. that is the only way it was that such and such and so and so did this to this person without the other one knowing. Right. And then, too, they um, also connect him to people like um, who believe that the end of times or movies like this very one is going to be how it goes down. Which is not true because he's writing a science fiction novel about it and it's science fiction. It's fantastical. It's like his worst nightmare. You know? So it's like, okay, well, um, you know, if you think that's how it's going to go down, that's probably how it's going to go down for you. You missed the point. You missed the bus, Gus. Okay? So, <clears throat> then, you know, let's... So now, okay, we're up to the part where they have to... Uh, they have to get blindfolds. Okay? And we're going to see more color representation in there. Oh, well, first, we meet Sandra's polar opposite, who is Elizabeth? Olivia. Olivia. And she is the exact opposite of Sandra. You know, Sandra so, is... So, oh, we'll stop right there. We looked up the meanings of the names. I know what Olivia means in Spanish. It means joyful. Uh -huh. And she was. And Mallory means... The unfortunate one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, poor Mallory, you know, she was so, you know, in her own darkness and, you know, she was very disjointed and disconnected. Um, and then here comes Olivia into the house. Emotional. She's just... Cheerful. She wanted to name her daughter after Disney princesses. And she was so sweet and innocent and she didn't... I mean, she was the exact... Everything that Sandra's character was... She, she was the opposite. Yeah. She was going to be the fantastic mother who was going to... She just couldn't wait. Mother so hard that she would, you know... Spoil the child or something. You know, just never let them, you know, out of her sight. You know, that kind of mom. Whereas Sandra is going to be like, well... I guess you can... Rip each other's arms off. Gnaw on this uh, T-bone steak. Here you go. You know, she doesn't really get it mm -hmm. so now we'll get to the part where they put on the blindfolds okay 
So they are literally blinding themselves to the truth. Mm -hmm. Does that sound to familiar? See it or to In order to survive, they had to blind themselves from the truth and be blind, but also subject themselves to like terror and like all these crappy things that could mm -hmm. happen to them, right? Um, and then we get into more color sim symbolism in the blindfolds that they wear. Sandra's was red, wasn't it? In the beginning, it was blue. Um, and she only had a red one once. Okay? A reddish, you know. Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Um, and the same part of the color wheel. <laughs> yeah. So blue, you know, she's looking like, okay, she's still in her masculine energy. Then there's this one time when they decide they're going out on a food run to the grocery store. Then Sandra has a reddish blindfold. And that's one of the times in the movie you see Sandra be a little emotional and soft. Okay? So the first thing she does, she's not thinking at all when they get inside of the the um, Bounty. supermarket. And, you know, they haven't even taken their blindfolds off. And she's like, hello! And they're like, shh. So not like her, right? But here she is with her red on. She's feeling vulnerable and emotional, honey. And this is also the point in time when she picks a gift for Olivia. Uh -huh. She gets two gifts for these unborn children. That's her first act. Like, okay, you know, mother, sweet, soft, I'll get these gifts for them. And then that's also where she meets... The birds. The three birds. Let's just take a minute to appreciate the symbolism of three birds. Okay? And... It's a good thing this thing doesn't have a beauty filter on because Rhiannon would <laughs> fall victim to that. <laughs> um, if y'all think about the three birds of Rhiannon, they could bring death or warn of death. They could sing you to your death. They could sing you to death. You know, lull you into, okay, it's going to be okay, I'm dead. They could you know, warn you. They could... You know, they were also able to bring blessings and hope of a new life, mm -hmm. new future. And they were also able to bring bounty. They were said, you know, if they sing over your fields, you know, your your crops would come back to life. Well, she found them in what they literally described as a bounty. Mm -hmm. And she said, how did you guys get so lucky? Mm-hmm. So there you go. And we're like, oh, I see now. And this is also going back to her red instinct, her red energy, mm -hmm. the female. She's connected to animals and spiritual things. She oh. said, oh, I'm going to take these with me. How did you get so lucky? You are beautiful. You're she coming said, with me. You're mine. You're coming with me. They were going to protect her. Okay. Because she noticed when those birds went nuts. Bad that meant happened. death was coming. Evil was there. You know, the evil, but like the, the, the spirit. Nightmare. You know, the nightmare was there. Um, trying to take someone. Trying to reap someone. Um, or that, you know, One of the that crazies. negative energy is there. So let's look at the spiritual symbolism of birds. Because as a... As a spiritual person as um, a witch or whatever you want to label yourself a goddess you want to be like a bird because you'll why? always fly away because you're able to walk onto the earth you're able to ascend into the other realms and then you can descend and come back with what knowledge Ooh, honey did y'all catch any of that that's what birds represent. They represent the spirits of the other world that are good. You know? Or people who are in control of the spiritual realms because they can ascend and descend. At will. At will. Like a good alchemist, spiritual practitioner, witch, whatever you call yourself, able to do. Wizard, warlock, although we'll probably get some flag for that. So, oh, it's this, it's that, and it's I mean, the third. If you want to call yourself a pink elephant, as long as you're able to ascend and descend. That elephant got to have wings. 
Jones. She good. You know? give, that, give that elephant some Red Bull. Okay. Red Bull sponsors. So that's where the, the bird symbolism comes from. Um, and, you know, for the fact that they were red and green birds. And had a little bit of blue mm -hmm. around their eyes. That showed that the birds were balanced. But green in alchemy represents magic, magic. spirit, arcane, esoteric. Think emerald tablets. Yes, Think all of that, you know. Little green ibis man. All that extra magic energy. Mm -hmm. That's what they represented, quite literally. So, Sandra takes her birds, you know, they're back. Um... And she's starting to come around just a little bit to motherhood, but not quite. So, <clears throat> some stuff goes down. And, you know, fast forward. And, you know. Most of these people are fleeing the scene or. There was a, there was a couple who decided to get together or get together sake in the house. And they decided to act on their own personal accord, their own personal uh, safety. They had their own agenda. <laughs> there you go, that's what we're looking for. They acted <laughs> on their own agenda and they left. And you can assume, quite promptly, died. Mm -hmm. um, not that we, not that they were going to return to the house because they were leaving everybody there. Um, but, you know, it's almost like those people will be gone and never heard from again. That's what they're telling you. Like, during this, you know, spiritual trial, if you act, you know, just on your own, on your own accord, you'll be gone and never heard from again. That's what they're telling you. So then, we meet another character. And he is... What was he, a scientist? Something, Something like, like that. that. He was a little crazy. He might have actually... He was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Right. And we find out um, that people who are a little crazy um, are able to survive and able to look without dying. Because they know their own fear. Right. Or because they're crazy... They know that there is no good and evil, so there's nothing to be afraid of, okay? They know that everything is polar, and they know that it's just all knowledge, you know. That and information is out there. Right, and supposedly these people have seen this stuff all along. It's so been it's not there their entire life. So it's not shocking to them. Maybe that was the voices in their head. You know, that was the, you know... What made people think that was they were their crazy. team? That was their truth. Mm -hmm. So think about that. When we talked to Alan, I, gosh, how long ago was that? It was sometime a couple of months ago. We talked about y'all know when you know the apocalypse does come, you know, and you know they're going to look to spiritualist, which is alchemists. People of, who are in touch with spirit. Right. And they are, you're going to get two kinds of people. There's going to be people who will follow you and look to you for answers. And there's going to be people who will call you crazy. Okay. So he called these people and, you know, turns out he was one of them. Crazies. They escaped from a sanatorium. Um... And the, the guy that, you know, they encounter a guy at the uh, grocery store, too, and um, Charlie says... Oh, he was always he's, a little... He's a little crazy, and he doesn't die. You know, he kills Charlie, but he doesn't die. Um, so, we, we see now, so what do you think those people represent? Are they crazy? Are they the ones in the movie? It's yeah. about perspective. Yeah, yes and no. Because they're going about things the wrong way. Okay? Remember when we talked about the mythology of Lilith? And how Lilith wanted to go to Earth and, you know, grab these humans and be like, here's the secret to life. 
and then they would go insane. Mm-hmm. And then Ellen was like, dear sweet. She said, please, girl, you know, we've got to stop that. You know, we've got to just give them breadcrumbs and let them wake up gradually because if they we don't, don't they're going to go insane. They're going to go crazy. They, they can't know all of this all at once. And Lilith was like, if you, if why, I'm going to do what I want. Um, but <laughs> cats should never wear more jewelry than their own. So, Any minute now, your hand should spasm. Glory me. So yeah. that's what we're talking about. There, we're learning yeah. that um, things have to happen gradually. Right. So for them, the crazies, it was gradual. But what we find out is, is the crazies want you to look. They want you to look at the sky and to see look, the creatures. Look with your special eyes. They want you to take your blindfolds off. Okay? Oh, Brian. So that would be like us if we came on here on YouTube and was like, okay, well, here's the secret. Here it all is. Y'all would either think we're crazy or y'all will get paranoid as... And I'm not saying we know everything. But we know... More than we let on. Yeah. So you have to... Take a, a note out of Inanna's dusty old spell book. And all oh, night, Granny Pearl. Hope you sleep good. Pleasant dreams. Um, so, y'all think about, um, you know, what that would do. So you have to show restraint. So these people have the option to either go on there and help the other people by slowly letting them know what's going on, helping them, teaching them, giving them breadcrumbs. Say, oh, it's really not that bad. It's just this. And if you do this, um, then guess what? They'll be okay. And they could slowly take their blindfolds off. And then they can see. Okay? And then... Oh, oh, oh Santissima. That is a beautiful cloak you have on there, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, they, yeah, they could have just been guides. They could have said, okay, look, we can see. Let me help you. Right. Let me help you down the river to these other people. Spoiler alert. <laughs> to there if I help you. Um, let me be the one to lead you to the enlightenment, you know, lead mm -hmm. you to it, drop the breadcrumbs, help you, teach you, love you, but not, hey, look. You know, and that also kind of reminds me about the way the crazies acted, is not to compare the crazies or these dastardly people in the movie to our deities, but that's kind of the role that they were playing Except they were not helping. Mm -hmm. They were literally hurting. And I, I think if you can think about like, think about in Indiana Jones when the guy looks at the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the secret. He mm -hmm. looks at the secret, divine, whatever, whatever. His face melts off. Think about, um, you know, when... Um, the veil was torn back and people laid eyes on Isis. Think about what happened. Holy shit. It's Isis. She's so fucking gorgeous. So. My little lesbian heart couldn't take it. There we go. So, this is the kind of mm -hmm. stuff that um, y'all are going to see in this movie being played out. So, let's fast forward. Sandra and the girl give birth, okay? Sandra's in love with her birdies. You know, they're protecting her. She realizes that they help her. Um, and then, yeah, the non-criminal crazies are probably the ones who were at the end that we meet that weren't blind, but that were there helping. That's probably those crazies, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they alluded to that just a little bit, just, you know, not to stereotype or anything, but, like, there were people there who could see in the crowd or whatever, and they were kind of like, 
rocking back and forth. You know? So, here it is. Okay. I get it now. You're not just in my mind anymore. <laughs> so, the, the crazy guy, the scientist, whatever he is, uh, goes postal, starts killing everybody by revealing mm -hmm. the, the outside. And he does show or take sketches of the nightmares. Mm -hmm. And you and see... lays them on the coffee table. And you can kind of pick out some of them, you know, that might look like creatures from mythology and things like that. Obviously, they're not going to be able to completely depict things right. like that. Um, but, um... I think having us not be able to see it was more... Cinematic. Cinematic. It was more suspenseful because yeah. we had no clue. And we were just as clueless as the people with the blind. Right. And that was kind of the point, I guess. This looks purple on here. It's blue, I think. Um, so, um, he, you know, Olivia, you know, Sandra's polar opposite, um, he rips off the window after they've just given birth. What does she do? Look right at it. What does Sandra he do? He says, oh, it's beautiful. Look at it. Sandra covers her head and covers her baby's head. And then she realizes that Olivia has seen it and she's like oh i gotta save you know her baby mm -hmm. so she's junior she's letting her you know feminine instinct come out just a little bit just a little bit but she's still acting with her masculine like okay i'm gonna save her i'm gonna save her i'm gonna save her you know mm -hmm. that logic was coming through okay so then she saves her baby olivia jumps out the window boom dead Mamacita. The crazies are here to tell us to take off our blindfolds. Um, the the older lady, the crone, she gets exposed. The midwife. Mm -hmm. um, the not by her own will. Mm -hmm. The polar masculine guy in the movie gets exposed. Guess which one doesn't get exposed? The guy who saves Sandra who acted very masculine, but was also, we found out, in touch very with, nurturing and feminine. And in touch with that energy. Okay. He was balanced. He survived everything they threw at him, okay, in that house. So, and he was able to save Sandra. So now fast forward, it's him and Sandra, five years in the future, with these two kids. And these two kids um, have been named Boy. And, and girl. girl. Okay. So now, what do you think that's about? Of course, we know it's about, you know, Sandra's not... Acknowledging the fact that she is a mother. But, you know, if you think about it, why would they do that? Because if they were there with Tom, Tom was so loving and nurturing and so in love with those kids, he would have said, look, we're giving them names. He didn't do that. And they did that for a reason. They stay boy and girl because this movie's about Sandra and her journey. And what did we say was wrong with her at the beginning? Unbalanced, polarized to the masculine. So she was, well, her child was the boy. And she was okay with the boy. She was all right with him. But with the one that she had issues with was the girl. Did you catch it yet? So Sandra has to learn how to coexist with her boy and her girl mm -hmm. to survive. And of course, this all devolves as expected. Right. You know, the guy ends up sacrificing himself. You Which know, is completely a blue masculine trait. Right. He says, you know what, you have to save these kids. You have to take them down the river. Yeah, they find out about this mm -hmm. sanctuary on the river. And you have to go, you have to save them. Um, da, 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 da. Well, okay, so you know, and then the crazies come and they get him, but he puts up a good fight. He kills all of them and then and himself. Get this when he sees it, he doesn't instantly kill himself. He sees it, then he kills another two people, or maybe just one, before he kills himself. Okay, and he sees and he's still hanging on. He doesn't quite know, but he was balanced, so he was surviving, surviving pretty good. 
But how does he shoot himself? Through the pineal gland, not pituitary. Right up through the pineal gland. What is your pineal gland? It's your third eye. He shot his third eye out. He didn't want to see. Y'all cannot sleep on these movies, I'm telling you. And I think, really, if you're not getting the gist of this, this is a movie that says, face your spiritual fears. Mm -hmm. You have to learn slow so that when the shit hits the fan, you can survive. So. It may be smelly, but you can survive. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> Sandra has to get on a boat in the river. She has to traverse this river with her blindfold on. Mm hmm with the two kids. Which she was she, wearing a pinkish colored coat. A uh -huh, pink coat and um, a pink backpack, but a blue blindfold. The kids, the boy was wearing a yellowish blindfold, which typically means like, um, you know, spiritually enlightened. Mm -hmm. um, and the boy, uh, or the girl, was wearing a pink one. Okay, and you see, you know, as stuff goes on, you know, we could play by play, but as stuff goes on, the little girl hops, you know, she's... She does what her mother did. Right. She acts emotional. I gotta go help Mallory. Something's wrong. Nothing's you know, going right. I gotta get out of this boat. That uh, Her instinct took over. Mm -hmm. Took, takes over. So... The little boy says, mm -hmm, well, bye. You know, he doesn't say I'm that. staying in here because Mallory said so. He's just following her orders. Like a, a boy would follow his father's orders, probably. Um, and she said, mm -mm, I'm going to go find her. With her little blindfold on. Brave is crap because she doesn't. Even though Sandra has treated her like crap. She loves her. And she's emotionally attached to her. And mm -hmm. she's not going to let her go. She's going to go look for her. So, <clears throat> of course, Sandra, you know, has a little freak out on her. Kind of the way you see dads handle children who do things. They don't react emo. They, they react don't think about why the yeah. kid did it. Because they love you. Or they yeah. don't know any better. Or they just were concerned. They, oh, well, you could have got yourself hurt. You could have did this and this and this and this and this. Yeah. They react in that masculine kind of way and, you know, I don't care why you did it. Yeah. It's what you did, you know, even if it was, you know, for a good reason. Even if you did care about me. Right. You gotta save yourself. That's what Sandra says. Say it. Save yourself. You know, and they're like, oh shit, okay, Sandra's losing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Then, you know, it gets to the point where, you know, they have to... Oh, and the spiritual symbolism of a river. What is a river? Transformation. Yeah. Water is what? What? Spiritual... Um, journey. Feminine. A river is a journey, you know. Mm -hmm. Think about, like, um, in the even in the Disney movie, Pocahontas. You know, Pocahontas doesn't know where she wants her journey her life to go and she sings that song just around the river bend and she's on the canoe mm -hmm. she doesn't know oh my gosh it's my spiritual journey that's what's happening sandra is literally on the spiritual journey she's trying to figure it out and she can't because she's still blue blind blindfolded honey she can't get in touch blind with, with it. blue and not purple right and something i noticed about their backpacks which I noticed this the second time I watched it. The people who had, um, like, the little boy had a blue backpack. It was like he carries his, you know, masculinity with him, but he's blinded with his, you know, like, he was, like, blinded with spiritual, mm -hmm. like, enlightened, not enlightenment, but, like, spiritual... Awakening. Goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just a good boy, you know. Um, That's a good boy. Yep. Little girl um, had a lot of red on her backpack. She was going to grow up to be from pink to red. She was going to be a, just like her mother, mm -hmm. highly emotional, highly feminine, polar feminine. Sandra carried a pink.
pink backpack. Bright pink. Doesn't sound like her, does it? So it was litter and her that backpack. That was her load. That was mm -hmm. her burden that she had to carry in order to get. Because their backpacks were just, you know, light. Hers, she carried it like a load. It was her Think burden. Think of a ten of wands. Her, her, her red, mm -hmm. her femininity was a burden to her, which is what we learned in the beginning of the movie. It was her condition. Okay? Now, y'all got to rewatch it after you see this, because I'm telling you, you're going to see so much stuff. So then, fast forward. Okay, now we're, they've, you know, flipped out of the boat, you know, um, and they're in the woods. You know, they made it through the rapids. They're in mm -hmm. the woods. And, um, so the, they're at the spiritual crossroads, okay? The stuff starts to come get them. And Sandra falls down a ravine. And the kids start hearing the, the things pretending to be her telling them to take off their blindfolds. Sandra doesn't know how to get to them because she's blindfolded, so she, you know, she's trying you know, she's, oh, ring the bell, ring the bell. What is you a, can ring my bell. What does a, a bell ringing represent? Something magical is about to happen. Ching, ching, ching. Ching, ching, ching. Ching, ching, ching. Just like in a ritual or a ceremony, you ring a bell to start. Mm -hmm. Ring the bell. So she's basically saying something, you know, she doesn't know it. But what they're saying is, hey, get ready. Something magical is getting ready to happen. Ching, 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 ching. So, and then here comes the spirits, and they're after her. And she's able to get in touch with Boy real quick. Okay? She can save Boy because Boy trusts her because she treated him better. She, you know... She could connect with him better. Right. They were connected. Not just because it was her son, but because he they was, were... He represented the masculine energy, mm -hmm. and that's all she had. Mm -hmm. That's all she knew how to connect to. She didn't know how to connect to that little girl. Didn't care, either. And so, yeah. then... To some degree, she didn't care. You know, the little boy gets there, and, you know, was told you he has yellow. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, aware. You know, he's spiritually aware, and he says, She's not going to come to you. She's afraid of you. And Sandra's like, oh. You know, and then all of a sudden, Sandra goes through her spiritual awakening. And guess what happens? She has a breakthrough. She starts talking to the little girl like a mother. She start. I'm sorry I did this. I should have been like this. I should have da 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 Let me tell you a story. Let me nurture you. It's going to be okay. Come to me. You're my little girl. Mm -hmm. she, take, she took claim to her. Then all of a sudden... Little girl's right there. Okay. And she says, Oh, I've got my girl and, and my, my boy. boy. What does that mean? I have my masculine and, and my, my feminine. feminine. She's ready to go, honey. She picks them up and carries them. She is now Wonder Woman, so to speak. She got her red and her blue. Mm -hmm. Just like Wonder Woman. She's ready to go. And then guess what? Well, the monsters, if you want to call them that, the nightmares get worse and they're after her honey they are trying so hard and Sandra can't hear because they're attacking her now so what does she have to do she has to depend on the kids which way are the birds which way are the birds because they the little, were following the sound of right. the birds and do you remember who could hear the birds the little girl she's there that way there they go okay so she's now depending on her femininity her her um, girl. instinct, her girl, to lead the way. Y'all, please tell me you saw this. It was like killing me the entire time. So we get there. We're like, okay, shoot. And then it's, oh, she says, you know, she gets to the door. And she's like, please. Let us in, let us in. I have kids. Just take the kids. Yeah, just take the kids. Leave me. If you just open the door and let the kids in, uh, you know, just take them, save them. She has become the ultimate mother she's protecting but she's also emotional mm -hmm. okay so door opens boom they're inside 
Oh, honey, it's it's all good. They now. even lift their blindfolds to see. Yep. And then guess what? They can see again. They're indoors. And then they can go outside. They're at this school for the blind. They can literally go outside because there's an atrium. And that atrium is covered in plants so that, you know, you can't see out. But you can birds see the light. Birds and butterflies. It's full of birds and butterflies and flowers. And it's like the sacred garden. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the other world. On when, if you will, they have traversed and they have reached. Oh, uh, they're there. Okay. So, then what happens? Guess who shows up? The Guess doctor. Guess who back in the house? <laughs> Let's click like a note now. The ch not the church woman, the, the, her doctor her, that was going to... Her obstetrician. Right. So, why do you think she would pop up at the end? She would, you know, in the beginning, the doctor mentions, she says, you know, me, you, and your sister are going to, you know, see you become a mother in that delivery room. Well, Sandra gave birth, but she never became a mother. She literally waited till she met her doctor again at the end of this apocalypse mm -hmm. scene. Oh, now you're going to see me become a mother. She literally laid claim to the children, named them, told them why they were special, and said, I'm your mother. Mm -hmm. She never said that before. And she did it in front of the doctor. Not so she, be, she literally gave birth to these children at that point in time and named them. Right there in front of her. So her whole experience, this whole river ordeal was like her giving birth to children and to her own self. Yep. It was her spiritual awakening. And she survived the apocalypse. Because she learned to balance. Right. But think about how hard it was for her to get there. It was a journey. Because she was not already in tune with any of those things. So she had to go through a nightmare. In order she to could. wake up. Mm -hmm. To literally take the blindfold off. So, that's what the movie's about. It is about balancing your spirituality. It's about, you have to know how to decode symbols. You have to know what these spiritual principles are. You have to be aware that it these, just can't all be love and light, and it can't and just bless be, and it can't just be you know I'm in touch with oh I'm more feminine than this I'm is, in touch with nature, and yeah. nature will save you know honey nature can save herself she can't save you because nature don't need you you need nature mm -hmm. so you need nature you need science. You need nurture, spiritual, you need all of it. You need it all. You just can't have one and then... Right. You have to be in... You perfect. can't play one role. You have to be perfectly balanced. And so, they're also telling you, um, they're throwing out things like, you know, that's going to happen on a smaller scale, you know, than... <clears throat> so, we've been talking about there's something going on in the sky lately. You know, we've been talking about that. Watch the clouds. We've been saying, watch the clouds. Look at the sky. Look at this. Look at that. Why? Something's coming from the sky. Something's going on up there. Something's getting in from up there. And you have to be ready for it. And it's not necessarily a being. Perhaps more of a cosmic energy that's going to brush your light shadows. Okay, and so it back to Blondie again. <laughs> this is what they're trying to prepare you for. No, it's not going to be on the scale of bird box. No, you're not going to have to carry three birds around in a black box. You're not going to have to, you Run know, two children up a river. But symbolically, you will have to go through a nightmare you if you are not prepared for it. Um, because what's coming through, you know, um, without saying so much, um, ancient cultures were a lot more awake and aware of things because there mm -hmm. was something not above them that's above us. 
and ours is starting to be removed in spots. And it's trickling in. Something's trickling in. And, and it's, it's got to happen slowly. And it's manifesting. And already, if y'all go Google suicide rate, suicide rates have went up substantially in the last three years. And we like to blame society, which of course is part of part it. Part of it. But we're, people are becoming more unstable because they are unable to handle these things because they are not spiritually sound. Right. They're either sound in the wrong way or they just don't care. Right. And it's... It's not a bad thing. and It's not, it's not about like, religion. Mm -mm. You know. It's not saying like, oh, your spirituality is... You need to go to church or something. You know, if or you're not like a pagan or a witch, you're, you're going to commit suicide. No. That's not the case. Obviously, there's other factors. But they're saying to you all, this is going to come through. People are going to start going insane when the truth comes out. And didn't I tell you all, before we watched Bird Box, before any, my prediction for 2019 Lots. is that things are going to get exposed even more. They're getting more sloppy. Things, if you know, you just look at the news, you look at how many things are coming to light right now. Mm -hmm. They're throwing so they, much. They are ringing an alarm bell for people to wake up. And sadly, there are some people that just won't wake up. And that's mm -hmm. just got to be the way it is. So, so, you know, you can't go around knocking on doors and say, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Rhiannon? Right. And if you, you know... Our Lord. Do you think it means that such a huge percentage of LGBTs... Yeah. Well, I think... Um, I'll tell you, actually, exactly why I think that is. Um, because a lot of what disenfranchises LGBT people is families that are highly... Religious, not always, but most of the time, this is what disenfranchises right. them. That's the part of our society that is used against them. Okay, the problem with that is they then reject all spirituality, all types of you know things that could help them. They basically you know because become, they're still in some degree using that religious moral code that was instilled in them from birth to govern their day-to-day -day life. And it just can't work. You can't operate in absolutes like I mentioned before. Or what I see mostly is that they completely reject all of it. And they're like, right. none of it's real. But to some There degree, is no spirituality. There's none of it. It's all crap. So they have nothing to stand on. They have nothing to fall back on. everybody and like, else does a real good job a jerk in their platform out from underneath them mm -hmm. and they get stuck uh, normal cisgender people even LGBT cisgender people get stuck on minute details of things and they jerk whatever platform that trans people have to stand on out from underneath them mm -hmm. so it's, it's tough you know for these young kids because and I've read articles, too, that, you know, when exposed to spiritual things um, like witchcraft, alchemy, you know. The good stuff. This kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, even Christian-based um, things that are, like, Christian, but, like, okay, well, they tell you this, but it really means this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, once they're exposed to that, these kids take right to it. And they run with it, and they do great, you know? So, that's how I know that's a lot of the problem is because yeah. they don't it's... have any hope, okay? Yep. Right. Yep, exactly. Self-hate, you know, they're pushed into, you know, no hope. And that was um, part of the problem I... in Bird Box, too, is people who had no hope. You died. have no place is basically what... They're being told. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't a problem in the ancient times because it was completely acceptable. Mm -hmm. This is all a Western patriarchal thing. And so what you're going to see in the future is we're going to see when these things start to be exposed more, 
you know, we're going to see a lot of people flock to spirituality. We're going to see a lot of people wake up, but we're also going to see a lot of people... It'll be too much for them. We're not trying to fear monger. No. We're not trying to say, hey, y'all, it's going down. People are going to die. People die every day People regardless. die every day. But there's going to be a lot more people die once these things start to happen. And we're not talking about bird box. Well, yeah, level. it's not going to be like that. You know, they're trying to hit you on the head with a, like, hey, hey, and hey, plus, hey, hey. Instead of, hey, you guys, the death rate is going to go up. Now, could you imagine if the movie was like, well, don't go out and, you know, become spiritually aware. Because if you do, some of you might go crazy, and some of you might become everybody's, criminally insane, and some of y'all might kill yourself. Everybody's reaction to that would be, sounds like you're wearing what a, tinfoil. What a dumb movie. What a stupid little movie. And a lot of people thought it was a stupid movie anyway. I liked it. They didn't understand. And I saw a lot, they th saw a lot of people out there who was like, oh, this is a knockoff of A Quiet Place. So I watched A Quiet Place I think this we've all learned that we should never go on a trip anywhere with Sandra Bullock. Seriously. Because <laughs> you end up in outer space or somewhere. Um, or on a bus from hell. Um, so, what was I saying? The people were saying it was like A Quiet Place. Oh, so I watched A Quiet Place this weekend. <gasps> Nothing like A Quiet Place. Uh, I mean, there's a whole nother batch of symbols. It's apocalypse kind of stuff. Um, but... Still out pop of optic couture. It's not a ripoff by any means. This was a, a novel long since, you know, created. Um, and this is trying to give you a different kind of perspective on an apocalypse. And it's like, you know, basically a call to people who need to be able to open their eyes. You know, that's all it is. I wish you would open your eyes, Shelby. Open your, open your eyes. So, that's it. That's Bird Box. And there is so much more in there, so much more minutia. We had to skip a bunch because we're already over an hour. Um, yeah, we just might. Um, and I'll tell you another movie I saw this weekend, which I haven't even got to tell Brittany about. If y'all haven't seen that movie, you need to go rent it from Redbox. It's called Peppermint, starring Jennifer Garner. And I had no idea what this movie was about until I saw it. It's about a goddess, a deity... That's in this very room. She's does she like junk? She's, she, she likes junk food. Doesn't she's she? literally in the movie. I was like, "What? Altars and everything." I was like, "You got to be yeah, yeah, this one." Mm -hmm. Girl. La Santissima Muerte. And all I have to say is, who is after Peppermint? Come on, you all. Why are you after brand new? We got to get out of here. Damn. <laughs> so I'm telling y'all, if you are into Santissima Muerte, you need to go watch Peppermint. She's a good, good girl, isn't she? And you might think, oh, you got to look close. You got to look close to who she is in the movie. Because if you think, oh, well, these, you know, guys are just praying to her or whatever. She's no, after Peppermint, isn't she? I won't give you any details, but, you know... Somebody embodies, ends up embodying her spirit in that movie. And going on a revenge bender. It's real good. Get it? Who's after Peppermint? Mm -hmm. So I'm telling y'all right now, that's a good movie. And it got real bad reviews. And I know it's because nobody got it. Like, I... I would have never guessed that it was right. about that by looking at the trailer. Because it's like Jennifer Garner, you know... Looking tough up against the wall with like some angel wings. And I was like, huh. But, you know, when we read the little 
Well, that it is was like, a choice, money bones. It was like, um, you know, this woman goes on revenge, you know. It's kind of like Taken and movies like that, you know, but instead of a guy lead, it's a female. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, that'll be good. I was so surprised. <laughs> I was like, damn. Okay. She everywhere. God is everywhere, honey. So, <clears throat> y'all definitely go watch Peppermint. That's good. We might, uh... Why will I bring it? We might rent Peppermint so Brittany can watch it, and we might break it down Sunday on Patreon. This is good. You wouldn't even believe. Oh, we all come from the Peppermint. So... Anybody have anything else before we sign off? Anybody? Why well, acting brand new? We got to get out of here. We still have. Did you watch All Stars? Nope. We'll have to do that next. Uh. <sighs> um. So, y'all have any questions or anything like that before we go? Anything y'all want to talk about? Real quick. Um, we will be doing Patreon readings um, either tomorrow or the next day, so they'll be posted soon. Um, they'll be in the evening. I have the sleepies, and I don't know why. So y'all stay tuned for your readings. Um, if you are a Patreon, I would suggest going to check, because just like last time, we lost a ton of people, you know, because Patreon's payment system is crap. puke -treon. Yeah. New Year's was... New. We watched Bird Box oh, then, yeah, did, and did. I was in severe pain because of menstrual cramps. <laughs> we also ate cheese fries. And drank absinthe. Well, I didn't. What did I drink? Because I didn't drink then. Don't know. But anyway. I don't was, remember when I died, right? Did you guys enjoy your New Year's? <laughs> In your first week of the year, last week. And did you enjoy your tears for fears? Oh, uh, let me tell you. It was funny that it was real bad at first. And then it was just like, ah, you're all done. I'm like, great, thanks. <laughs> Maybe she's starting to realize she's never having kids. <laughs> well, unless... Well, of course, I wouldn't be the one carrying them. You know, if they figure out that Jurassic Park thing, then it'll be all right. I saw a news story today that the scientists said that they were five years away from being able to genetically create dinosaurs. You made kimchi and watched The Magicians. That sounds fun. Sounds fun. That sounds fun. Okay. So, yes, hinges. Anybody got anything else? Because if not, we're going to put our blindfolds on and go out into the world. Ooh, whiskey. Whiskey's a little risky. Oh, cur. Oh, kizzity cur. You know, I don't think they like me on the RuPaul's Dress for Less, girl. Probably not. Well, I got a new plaid over the weekend. Uh -uh. I think we are going to sashay away, y'all. We are about to sashay away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sandra Bullock. Your blindfold was... Blinding. But your boy and girl couture was a little boy gorge. You're safe. Yeah, she go back to work tomorrow. Oh, I've been recovering from the flu. No good. I heard it's everywhere. Yeah. Kind of makes it scary to go out. It's like Bird Box. I'm manifesting that I will not get the flu this I'm year. I'm manifesting that I won't get sick at all. I have to go to the doctor tomorrow, and then I have to go again on Thursday. Kind of love the lady doctor, right? Good, good, good. Well, we're going to get our bird boxes out of here. And uh, we will see you guys on Patreon here in a couple of days. 
for your readings. So until we see you then, just remember. Goddess. Is great. And so are you. I love it. I'm going to put 